Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about section 6.5, which is about vector products and determinants. So the goal is to compute the cross product of two vectors and also this triple scalar product of three vectors, but using determinants. Recall that in definition 1.1, 4.1 in chapter 1, given the vector v with coordinates v1, v2, v3, and w with coordinates w1, w2, w3, we had the cross product of v and w was a, a vector with coordinates v2, w3 minus v3, w2, v3 w1 minus w3 v1 and the last coordinate was v1 w2 minus w1 v2. If we write this vector as v2 w3 minus v3 w2 i plus v3 w1 minus w3 v1 j plus v1 w2 minus w1 v2 k then we see that we v cross w can be seen as the determinant <coughs> i'm sorry where the first row is just i j k the second row is v2 v1 v2 v3 and the third row is v sorry w1 w2 and w3 so although maybe you ask that why do we put i j k in the first row although in the matrices we put numbers but these are not numbers it's okay we put them there and they appear in the answer uh, uh, just to form a vector, okay? You know what? I would like to expand this determinant, uh, uh, find the, I'm sorry, find the cofactor expansion uh, of this determinant along uh, the first row. So let's see what happens. So this becomes what? This becomes equals, well, uh, V1, w2 minus v2 w1 and then times i good plus and then keep going just evaluate the rest you see that exactly what we get is this vector right here okay good so we learned a new way to calculate cross product of two vectors, which is using the determinants. What you do is first row, always you put i, j, k. And in the second row, you respect the order. You put the coordinates of the first vector. And in the third row, you put the coordinates of the second vector. Example 6.5.1. Use the determinant method to calculate u cross v if u is 1 minus 2, 3, and v is 2, 1, 4. Okay, u cross v. As we saw, you put i, you put j, you put k, you put, you respect the order, first u, and then now you put v, and then Let's see. Okay, so what do we get? Let's do cofactor. Always do cofactor expansion along the first row, this one. So now we get negative 8 minus 3. And there's a minus in the second row, okay? In the second coordinate, I'm sorry. Then what do you get? You get 4 minus 6, so it becomes plus 2. And the last one is you do basically 1 minus minus 4. OK? 
Okay, so 1 minus minus 4, 5. That's it. Of course, you can write this as minus 11i plus 2j plus 5k. Let's do example 6.5.2. Use properties of determinants to prove the given properties of the cross product. Let's look at A. Let's evaluate u cross u, assuming, so assuming u has coordinates u1, u2, u3, and v has coordinates v1, v2, v3. So u cross u is just i, j, k, u1, u2, u3, and then again, u1, u2, u3. However, if you remember by properties of determinant, if you have two equal rows, then the determinant is zero. Very interesting fact that u cross u is indeed zero. However, it seems I forgot to put a vector notation right here. Because be careful, this is zero, but zero vector. Good. Now, part B. Let's evaluate U cross V. Then you put I, first row, J, and K. U1, U2, U3, V1, V2, V3. By properties of determinant, if we switch the second and third row, then we get minus times i, j, k, v1, v2, v3, u1, u2, u3. And this is just minus v cross u. You see, using the determinant definition of cross products, you can easily pr prove all those properties. Okay, good. Now, reminder, let u, v, and w be vectors in R3, then the triple scalar product of u, v, and w is, if you remember from chapter one, this was u dot v cross w. That's what we called triple scalar product. Okay. I think that's enough for today. I will continue next time.